Hey everybody and welcome to my second video about The Amazing Race Season 32. So in my last video, which I will put a link in the description below, I talked about my first impressions about the cast for Season 32 and what I thought about them as a whole unit rather than individual teams. So for this video, as we are days away from the premiere, I want to take a step further and give you all of my ranking predictions for this season. So obviously we haven't officially, officially met the teams yet in the context of actually watching the show, so I decided that I will be basing my predictions on what I've seen in the team features that the Amazing Race social media team has been posting all over Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Just solely on these things. I have heard no spoilers and I haven't checked out the social media accounts of any of the teams. Considering that's all they've officially released to us, I think it's a good start to base any predictions. So, you know, just a disclaimer before I go into my list. I've actually never been good in predicting the results of any season of The Amazing Race, and I am definitely no expert in analysis or psychology or relationships, and some of my reasoning here is really flimsy at best. I'm just a longtime fan who's excited about his favorite show, watching videos and feeling vibes, so you have been warned. Take this ranking and prediction at, with a grain of salt. So that being said, here we go with my ranking predictions for The Amazing Race 32. So my first boot of the season is actually a team whose team feature video I actually enjoyed watching. And that team is Michelle and Victoria, the sisters. So Phil called them the Cajun Asian sisters, which I thought was actually a really cute name. And he calls them feisty, which should make for some good TV. But I don't think that will necessarily mean a good racing team. I don't think they're as focused as some of the other teams like just basing off their video, and they may be overpowered by the loads of athletic teams in this season, which is why I put them here in last place. Now for 10th place, I have a team I also like because I enjoy watching a sibling dynamic team, and that team is Ezwar and Aparna. Honestly, they seem like the realest people in the bunch. They are software engineers, and the show seems to be going for the quote-unquote nerd angle. Phil says that this will be the most social interaction they've had in a while. I don't think they'll do that well, like with a similar reasoning as to why Michelle and Victoria are my last place. I just feel like they would be overpowered by some of the high caliber teams for the season. It seems that Ezwar seems to be the quieter one between the two against Aparna who seems to be like the overpowering one. They kind of remind me of Justin and Jennifer from season 19 and they were sort of like invisible until the leg that they were eliminated. So I feel like Ezwar and Aparna might share the same fate. So I have them here at 10th place. So for team number 9, I have Frank and Jerry. I'm gonna be honest, as soon as I saw this team, I thought that they weren't winning. Like it just popped in my head. It seems like production is pushing an overbearing father and pressured son angle for this group. And the way that Jerry speaks just really reminds me of my own father and the way that he speaks when he wants me to listen to him. It's like a very stern, very serious kind. I think that production may not be that far off pushing that angle. They're both athletes, basketball players, but Jerry is over 60 and that is probably going to affect them considering so many of these teams are on the younger side. That mixed with the possible father-son bickering dynamic is why I have them here down at 9th place. For team number 8, I put Nathan and Cody the best friends and noodlers. These kinds of teams are actually one of my favorite kinds of teams and this is why I fell in love with the show in the first place. They're just a pair of people who have never traveled and now they get the chance to travel the world. They are self-proclaimed weird but tough and tough as a pine knot, I'm not really sure what that means. And I read in an article before I did this video that Phil said that they reminded him of David and Mary from season 10. So because of that, I've ended up associating them with David and Mary. I think they're going to be great fun to watch, but like David and Mary, I think their inexperience with international travel and different cultures will definitely be a hindrance. And David and Mary had an alliance that basically carried them to 6th place, and I don't know if Nathan and Cody will have that luck. The strategy that they said of taking their time to do tasks the first time it isn't that original or dynamic, and that's why I have them here at 8th place. Okay, now we're entering mid-zone, so actually I had the hardest time placing the next 4 teams from 4th place to 7th place. 
I felt like these four teams were all pretty even in skill and the impressions that they made. But I'm gonna go ahead and rank them anyway. <laughs> but just know that I think that these four teams are basically interchangeable, so they could go either way. At 7th place, I have put in Kaylin and Haley. Now, for these Southern Sisters, in their team feature, they say that they're gonna use their quote-unquote Southern charm to flirt with the boys in order to get ahead. But I'll be honest, they come across as one of the more grounded and smarter teams in the group. Like, they can do things themselves, and that the whole flirting thing they're alluding to is purely tactical and a way to get ahead. Black Widow like, you know, just seducing the men over so that they can chop their heads off. They have an interesting backstory, having left home when they were very young, and learning to rely on each other, which is great when you're in a team. And I hope they do better than when I place them here at 7th place. For team number 6, we are halfway through. I put in Will and James, and Will and James are just adorable. I love them. <laughs> they spent like nearly half of their feature video on the verge of tears, if not already crying. <laughs> they have a very inspirational backstory, you know, wanting to be a source of light for other LGBT people out there, and that things do get better, and that's always a nice thing, you know, someone that people who are marginalized can look up to. They said that they plan to be kind to every team but still be competitive. Which makes me think that they'll be fan favorites. But they also said that they are super fans of the show. And that is why I have them here at 6th place. The Amazing Race has never been good to super fans of the show. I don't think a super fan team has ever actually won. It's like a whole expectations versus reality thing. And with a lot of stiff competition, I can only see them in the 4th to 7th place range. And ultimately, I ended up putting them here at 6th place. Now, we are down to the final five, and at the bottom of this top group, I have Hung and Chi. So they've been together 15 years. I can't really explain <laughs> what it is about them I like. It's their energy, and I really enjoy their dynamic. You know, how Hung says that she's the more vocal and intense one, and Chi is being the nicer and more laid back one. You know, it's like a nice little balance that they have. And they don't seem like to be the bickering type, which I like. Um, I think it's a good match to have one person to keep them in line and the other one to lead them off the line, you know, once in a while. However, they do say that they're treating this race as a vacation, which is honestly insane. Like, this is not a vacation. And that docks a few points against them in my book. But, you know, nevertheless, I think they'll make it pretty far. And that's why I have them here in fifth place. And now, just outside the final three, in painful fourth place, I couldn't put them in the final three, and it is Kelly and Levon, the Olympic hurdlers. So the thing with these ladies is I initially had them at seventh place. And you know, I was looking at my list again, over and over again, and I kept bumping them higher and higher, and eventually I just stopped at fourth place. So firstly, they met and worked together in a highly competitive situation, which is always a plus. They've said their strategy is to be patient and focus on themselves, which is a great strategy. I think they said in a separate video that their greatest fear is to be eliminated first, which just emphasizes that they're focusing on themselves. They are also just really, really fun to watch. Um, the Instagram stories on the Amazing Race Instagram were one of my favorites. I feel like they'll distract the competition enough to keep themselves around and not seem as threatening as the others, but I do feel like that they might find themselves on the outs towards the end if they focus too much on themselves and not on the other teams, and that is why I have them here very close to the final three, but not in the final three here in fourth place. Now, we reached the final three, and I'm gonna be honest, I picked out my final three fairly quickly, particularly the third and first place teams. Like, they just immediately stood out. So, I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. In third place, I have put Leo and Alana. And just like James and Will, I think this is a very adorable team. Just honestly, a very cute couple. And just like Ezra and Aparna, production seems to be playing the nerd angle with these two. They seem like very entertaining characters and will probably be fun to watch. I think they're gonna be fan favorites, you know? The way that they talk about their preparation on the show, and how ready they are, and their whole quote-unquote nerd persona, like, it doesn't feel forced at all. They seem genuinely book smart and street smart, 
and ready for the race. They seemed fit. They said they had six months of training. They've done CrossFit, as they said, just for this moment on the race. So I feel like it's no joke, and I seriously would not underestimate them. Smart teams have won the race before, so I definitely see Leo and Alana making it to the end. In second place was a team I had initially placed much lower. I came to the conclusion of putting them up here, making it to the end, but not quite finishing on top, and that team is Riley and Madison. So the reason I have them much lower is that they do say in their Instagram story on the Amazing Race Instagram, quote, here for a good time, but not for a long time, unquote. Which just really makes me think that they're not going to be able to focus as much as the other teams. Because, you know, if you're going to be on the Amazing Race, the goal is to win, you know? With that being said, however, they have worked together as a team, you know, as beach volleyball players. So to be in that dynamic of already knowing what it's like to be teammates and to work together to win, I think will definitely help in making them get far in the race. You know, they're professional volleyball players, they're brothers, so I think it's a pretty obvious observation that they are going to be a strong team. So, you know, like, their goal may not to be on the race for a long time, but with the experience that they have for working and winning together, I would not be surprised if they ended up lasting a long time. And finally, the team that I think will make it to leg 12, win the title, and win a million dollars is fairly obvious at this point, Gary and D'Angelo, the ex-NFL players. I picked this team out from the start as soon as I saw the full cast photos. If you asked me why they stood out to me, I honestly could not coherently tell you why. <laughs> they have one of my favorite dynamics. They literally say they're like twins even though they're completely different. <laughs> they're extremely competitive and like Madison and Riley, they know how to work together and win together which I always consider a plus. A can-do and almost cocky attitude is definitely a motivation boost and I think you're gonna need a lot of those when you're on the Amazing Race. And just frankly, the back and forth banter between these two gives me life. And if they don't win, I hope they last long enough to give us some funny and maybe iconic moments. So Gary and D'Angelo, I hope you win. I'm putting you on the top of my predictions list as the official winners of the Amazing Race season. 32. And that's it. I did not expect this video to be this long. <laughs> so that is my predictions list. For a recap, I'm just going to put in a picture of my ranking from 1st to 11th on the screen. I've already said this before that I really, really like this cast and I'm ready to see how this all plays out. So how'd I do? Do you guys agree? Do you guys think I'm an idiot who doesn't know anything and screwed up this list completely? You know, let me know in the comments. <laughs> You know, I'm just really happy that The Amazing Race is back, and I can't wait to start talking about it again. So The Amazing Race premieres on October 14 in the States, and October 15 over here on my side of the world. And here's hoping that this is an amazing season of our favorite race around the world.